Well, good morning to everybody. It is 10.29 a.m. And so we're going to start here in just a few moments. Going to get uh, everybody time to get in and get acquainted. If, if you're here, go ahead and feel free to uh, say hi uh, to us. Because we want to say hi to you as well. And at this time... I am going to be putting some things in the comments section for you, if that will help. Now, the first one that is now in there is, if you happen to have a prayer request, uh, you can click on that one, and it will uh, take you right there, and it will come to us. This next one that I am posting... All right, so if this is the first time that you are visiting with us uh, in the last little bit, there is a second card there for you. You can click on that and it will take you directly there. And then this last one is... Sorry, I cannot type talk and think everything at the same time. Um, but the last one that I just posted in there is uh, if you would like to uh, help the ministry here, we're so grateful for each of you partnering with us. You can give uh, securely and uh, quickly right there. And so I want to say hello to, to Jeff and Bob and Linda. I see that you guys are here and there are others who are already in here. Sorry, I, I missed uh, as you were coming in. Hey, there's Amy. Uh, good to have you in, and Rick and Tammy, and Jason, great to have you in from Midlothian. Uh, you know, uh, right about now, our family normally would be making plans to be headed in that area uh, come February, but wrestling season's been canceled, so I don't guess we will, but hope life is treating you guys well. And hello to Dan and Terry, terrific to have you guys in. Uh, one benefit of doing it this way is I can look over uh, at my laptop and I can kind of interact with you guys. Um, so as we're kind of starting this morning, I want to uh, just let you know, again, if you have a prayer request, there's a form up there. You can click that. Or if you want to just put it in the comments section, we're going to try to do this service a little bit differently uh, this morning. We we want to spend uh, some additional time in prayer Uh and I, I want to begin by by saying thank you. Uh, there's been a overwhelming and, and tremendous outpouring of love for our family uh, this week. Uh, yeah, we we had a chance to get away for a few days, which was nice uh, opportunity to rest and recharge. Uh, but it did not end the way that we wanted it to. Um, uh, but we do thank God for his faithfulness uh, and, and his mercy and his grace. Uh, we're going to have a funeral for Diana's uh, grandfather in a, a couple of days. And uh, we just, again, uh, like to first say thank you for your prayers and ask for your continued prayers uh, during this time. Um, you know, they, they say if you love someone, uh, let them go. And we understand it, but it's still hard. And uh, we know that we're not the only family that is dealing with the loss of a loved one uh, right now. And so uh, we, we certainly want to be pr in prayer for all the families who have lost uh, loved ones uh, this year. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter when it happens. It, it's, it's painful, but it, it does seem maybe a little more painful. Uh, when it comes uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas. So, um, again, I want to say thank you. Uh, I want to say thank you to Chris for filling in uh, for me on Wednesday. We're going to kind of come back to this a little bit. Uh, he didn't know it at the time, but I, I did get to, to tune in. Um, and so, enjoyed it. Uh, you know, very excited about the direction for our family ministry uh, that God is leading. And so, 
Uh, we are hopefully looking forward to being back in the building and still doing a live stream next Sunday, but we'll we'll keep everybody informed on that. Um, before we go too far down a, a um, somewhat depressing road, um, God is the author of joy, right? So um, I, I'm going to show you this nifty, nice little phone tie uh, made by my beautiful daughter. And uh, so I'm going to take it off before it chokes me, um, if I can. But yeah, she did a fantastic job. And I want to use that as a prop to tell you that Sunday, December 20th, is going to be Ugly Christmas Sweater Day at Westlake. So when you come to worship, find your ugly Christmas sweaters, wear them. Uh, you know, it's some people go, wait a minute, aren't we supposed to be reverent? We are going to be reverent in our worship, in our singing, in our study. But God's got a sense of humor. Um, I could probably write a book about just that aspect. Uh, but we want to encourage you to wear them now. Uh, for those of you that are just part of our Facebook Live family, we want you to join in as well. We're going to ask you to take a picture wearing your ugly Christmas sweater and post it in the comments so that we can all just kind of enjoy it and be together uh, as a family. So again, that is Sunday, December 20th, Ugly Christmas Sweater Day. Um, looking forward to it. Uh, now, we were going to be decorating uh, the church for Christmas uh, right after today's service, obviously that's got changed. We're going to do that next Sunday. So if, if you're able to hang around and be a part of it, we uh, would enjoy it. We're going to have Christmas music going, probably have a little bit of lunch uh, delivered in and just enjoy some time together. Uh, sorry, I guessed appearance from the, the Sock Monkey Coffee Cup uh, this morning. But is there anything that we can pray for you about? If so, please, again, use our prayer request form, or you can type it right here in our comments section, and uh, make sure to, if I don't see it, I'm sure Diana will see it and alert me to it so that we can pray about it, because we want to be in prayer for our community. Uh, we we want to be in prayer, obviously, for our church family. We had to uh, adjust things a little bit. Uh, because there have been multiple exposures for COVID-19. It just uh, trying to keep everybody safe. It's not that we live in fear. Rather, we walk by faith. Uh, but God does call us to use our common sense. And so we're trying to, to do that. Um, thank you, Amy. Uh, it was a Christmas present from Diana, I believe, last year. Um, the, the coffee mug. So it is, uh, it is better especially when it has peppermint coffee in it. Um, but if there's a way that we can pray for you again, please let us know. Um, you know, our community is dealing with COVID-19 uh, very heavily right now. We certainly want to remember the Scruggs uh, Volunteer Fire Department and, and even the Westlake uh, branch, I guess is the best way to say it, of Franklin County Public Safety is they're running a lot of uh, calls with COVID-19 patients. So we want to pray for them, uh, that they would be safe and uh, just continue to, to be right there with our community. And we're thankful for them. We also want to pray for our Commonwealth uh, as uh, things are um, somewhat dicey here in Virginia, I guess is probably the best way to say it. As I saw that the positive test percentage went up to 10 uh, yesterday. So uh, a lot going on there, but there's there's a lot of other things within the Commonwealth that need a lot of prayer as well. And then, of course, we want to be praying for our country. Uh, there's a lot of unrest and certainty, not only with COVID, but politics and, and all this other stuff. So we, we want to be in prayer for that and around the world. It's really, it's a reminder of Acts 1-8 when Jesus says that you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Uh, not only does that apply to evangelism, but it certainly should apply to the way we pray as well. Uh, and for those of you that have been doing the Agape Center uh, Angel Tree, those are going to be due back this week. Uh, and so if you have a gift or anything that you want to give towards that, please let me know. I will make an arrangement to make sure that we get it picked up and get it delivered back in time. 
uh, for them. It's just a way that we can uh, not only share Christmas uh, with those who are struggling in, in hard times, but more importantly, through the Agape Center, it's a way that we get to share the gospel uh, with them as the as they meet, they come in, they meet with a mentor, and they get to hear the gospel, and they get uh, the opportunity to get plugged into a church if they don't already have one. So it truly is a Christ-centered, gospel-driven ministry that we are proud to be a sponsor church of, and so ways that we can continue to serve them and um, just spread the gospel and some Christmas cheer. But as we're going to go ahead and start, again, I want to say good morning and thank you for everybody that has uh, been a part. Um, but I just I want to read a little bit of our text this morning and use it as a way that we're going to pray. It's going to come out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Beginning in verse 12, Paul says, For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit we all we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. So this is just a, a reminder here, and again, we're going to dive into this a whole lot more. Um, but the body... We're made up of many parts, just, just like our actual body, uh, but it's one body. And the unity of the church is to be a reflection of the unity of the Trinity. And, and we're going to dive into it um, some more. But we need to praise God because he is the architect of the church. He is the power in, of, and through the church. We need to praise God that we have a family. You know, th this is typically a time where we do a lot of family-oriented things, right? But we have to understand that not everybody has a, a close, immediate family or even extended family. You know, this has nothing to do with COVID. It's just the reality that some people are lonely, Yet we're reminded over and over in Scripture that we have God as our Father. If we have been saved and we have been brought into a family. And so for a lot of you, you've moved away from your family. So church is family. And so we want to praise God for that. So uh, feel free to interact here in the comment section um, click on any of those links if you want to, but let's go ahead and pray as we begin this morning. And I do want to give a quick uh, hello uh, to Sharon and Lewis, as well as uh, to Chris and Adam and family as they just uh, came in here. So let's go ahead and open up in prayer together. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for the opportunity to come before you. And Lord, just to worship you. This isn't normal for us. It's not the way that we would normally be operating on a Sunday morning. Uh, much like most of 2020, things get, have gotten turned upside down. And yet, Father, you are still good. You are still on your throne. And Father, we praise you for that, that there's never gonna be a time in which you are not on your throne in heaven, that you are not in control of all things at all times. That doesn't mean that everything is good. Uh, we, I mean, we look around and we see a, so much death, suffering, a hatred, violence, and we know that these are not a part of your original design. It's They are the pitfalls and the workings of a sin nature that's inside of every one of us. And yet we see over and over throughout your word that you can take what's meant for evil and you can bring about good from it. And so, Lord, we're asking that you would do what only you can do. And Father, we want to pray uh, for our church here at Westlake. We praise you that you have uh, kept us safe, though uh, the virus and many other things have been going and swirling around us so much. 
Lord, we know it's by your grace uh, that that's happening. We thank you for those that you have brought to us, God, because they are by your grace. We thank you for those who have been uh, with us for many, many years, even those predating me uh, there. Lord, it is proof of what we're going to study this morning. And so, God, we praise you not only for those who are able to gather uh, physically in the building most Sundays, but it, during this pandemic, we've been able to branch out via uh, social media and live streaming. And God, that is a gift from you. It's not a burden, it's a joy because we're able to speak with people, whether they are in Florida, in Midlothian, in Richmond, in uh, any other number of places. And so, Lord, it's a reminder that we are all connected. And so, God, we want to pray for each person who is on this live stream or that might watch it uh, later on. We pray that you would be with them, that you truly are their God because they have surrendered to the gospel. Lord, help us to be found faithful in your sight in serving you. Lord, I pray for the churches uh, in the Franklin County area and, and other places as well. Uh, many are having to do what we're doing. Uh, which is do a live stream only. Uh, so, Father, I pray that you would be uh, with the pastors and their leadership, uh, their social media teams, however they are uh, doing ministry today. Lord, be with them and help them just to seek your glory. We pray, uh, Father, for our brothers and sisters, and understanding that we are not in competition with them, but rather we are to cooperate as your body to reach this lost and dying world who desperately needs Jesus. And this season of gift giving, Lord, may it remind us of the greatest gift ever given to all of humanity, that is your son, Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, living a sinless life for the purpose of obeying you and laying down his life on the cross as payment for sin. But Father, this morning we are also reminded that we are not serving a God who is on a cross, nor a God who is in a tomb, but a God who is very much alive, who is seated at the right hand of you, who is ruling and reigning, and who one day, as promised in Scripture, will return for his bride. And we will be with him for all of eternity. And so, Lord God, let that uh, give us hope and joy today. Help it to give us peace in the middle of difficult circumstances in life. Let us be reminded that this world is not our home, that there's a better day coming. But until that day, Father, may we walk in fellowship with you, unity with one another, that the whole world may hear the message of the gospel. Lord God, we also want to pray uh, for those families who are suffering this morning whether it's their battling illness, uh, financial strain, marital strain, family issues, um, or uh, Lord, whether they're also like our family and grieving the loss of someone. Father, would you just comfort and encourage those families? Let us, let our minds be filled with scripture, such as Psalm 34, 18, that says, the Lord is near the brokenhearted. In Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There, verse four, he says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And he ends that psalm by saying, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, that is such an incredible promise given to your children that because of your grace through the gospel, that when we lay down this earthly body, we rise to be in your presence and we will never be separated from you again. And so Lord, for those who are hurting and who are suffering, let us do what the psalmist wrote in Psalm 121 to lift our eyes up knowing that our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And Father, while we go through these difficult days, let us be reminded that you are always with us, 
that there's never a time that we're going to be alone and that your grace is sufficient for whatever trials the present day brings. Lord, we pray for our state. We understand that there's so much going on right now. And so, God, we ask that you would give wisdom to the leadership of the state, but also of our nation. Lord, we pray that above all else, they would have a relationship with you, that you would surround them with men and women who love you, who will guide them in decisions that will glorify you. Because we know as we glorify you, you give wisdom and guidance, and it will be good for all. So, Lord, we pray for all of our elected officials this morning. As Scripture tells us, to, to pray for them, to live in, su in submission to them, even though we may not agree with everything they say or do. So, Father, help your church to be a living witness to those around us of what it means to have the peace and the joy that comes from a relationship with Jesus. We pray for our missionaries here for Southern Baptist churches, the time leading up to Christmas is a time in which we uh, take up a offering known as the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. It's a offering that remembers uh, Lottie Moon as an international missionary, but also it's a way that the 50,000 Southern Baptist churches can cooperate together and pooling their money to reach the lost peoples of the world. And so, Lord, may we be diligent in giving and praying for our missionaries with the International Mission Board uh, during this time, but also those of the North American Mission Board. As nice as it is to receive presents as signs of love from others, Lord, let us be mindful that the greatest gift we've ever received is you and that you give us the opportunity and means to share it with others. And so, God, I pray that we would, whether it's through the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, through the Agape Center, or however it is, Lord, may we give in a way that pleases you and sends the gospel to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Now be with us as we study your word, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. As we uh, now turn our attention to, your, to the word, we're gonna be again in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So hopefully you already are there. Uh, it is a, I do wanna give you a quick reminder that if you have the Bible app, you can go there. Uh, search events in Westlake Baptist Church, and you can find uh, the sermon outline that I'm going to use here, and you can make your own notes there as well as God speaks. So as we begin this formal time of study together, again, I want to say thank you to Chris. Uh, I see that he was able to join in with us um, here. He did a great job on Wednesday. Uh, there was a lot to uh, take in I try to comment on stuff as as I heard it, um, but my favorite line, and I, I shared this when uh, Chris and, and Jess came over and other people came over yesterday, uh, my favorite line from Wednesday night was this. Uh, it was the context of Chris saying, we're all the body and we have a role to play. And he says, so if you're a fingernail in, in the body of Christ, we will put polish on you and help you shine. That's awesome. Like that that was my favorite line. I, I think he talked for about 40 minutes or so. And he's probably like, out of 40 minutes, that's the one thing you remember. Yes. Um, now I remember a lot more, but what it was highlighting was this. There's no unimportant member in the body. We all have a role to play. It takes everyone doing their part to accomplish God's will for our life, but also for the church. Okay, here's the one big thing. There is to be unity in the body to glorify God and to reach the world with the gospel. So again, let me just start in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. 
For by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many. If the foot uh, should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he pleased. And if uh, we're all one member, where would the body be? Paul says so many theological things right there. We're not going to unpack them all right now. But let's talk about what does it mean? that This is part of our series, What is the Church? We've looked at love the past couple of weeks. The first week, uh, we talked about the church is called out. We're called out of the world to Christ to go to the world with the message of Christ. So what is unity? What does it look like? Uh, the first thing I want to say this is unity is not conformity. And what I mean by that is this. We're not all going to be the same. We're not going to see things the exact same way. Proof of that is this. If you are married, I can guarantee you, you and your spouse see things differently. Um, sometimes in my house, uh, I, I get told it's okay if you have another opinion. It's okay if you're wrong. Um, and we say that jokingly. Um, but again, we, we look at, at things differently. Uh, look at the news media, right? Like same story, same facts, but depending on which channel or, or news outlet you're watching, you're going to get two entirely different spins on it. But unity is not conformity. We see it throughout this text. Many members, right? Many members, one body. So we need to understand that this one body was created by God. Now, uh, the, the key word in this text, and sometimes people go, well, how can I know what a key word is when I'm reading a text? Look primarily for repeated words. In this instance, you see the word for over and over and over and over. For, 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 F-O-R, right? So the word for there is explaining how someone becomes a part of the body. It's a reference to the Holy Spirit placing us in the body once we have surrendered to the gospel, all right? So what we want to understand is the body, the church, is created by God through the blood of Jesus. We see it in Ephesians 1.7. All right? It's faith in the death, burial, and resurrection that makes us part of the church. It's not walking an aisle. It's not signing a card. It's not taking a new member's class. Okay, Ephesians 1.7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. It's important that we understand we can only come into the body, into the church, through the blood of Jesus. But as I see, um, Linda put a comment there, fitly framed it together. It's an architect, okay? If you look at a building and you're going, wow, check out that, that building. What you're really doing is you are honoring the architect who put it together. And in this case, the church's architect is God. It is God who has created us and put us together the way he desires. We see it in Jeremiah 18, a text I'm going to come back to uh, in just a little bit. Uh, in Ephesians 4, we see that God places each person in the body as he sees fit. Okay, And so it's not I get to decide where to go. It's God places me where he wants me to go. Uh, and I think this is something very important for the church to understand here, okay? I don't get to decide when I'm done at a church. 
God does. Why? Because the body is created by God and for God. It is God who dictates and directs everything we do. Okay? So, uh, we, we see similar language. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay, verse 7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. It's important that we realize that that earthen vessel, all right, it's clay. It, it, this is Paul using language from Jeremiah. Why? So that the power is of God and not us. Too often we, we try to do this ourselves. The second thing about unity is that God provides for the body. We see that in verses 27 through 31 of our text, if you want to join me there. It says, now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet I show you a more excellent way. That is one of the most interesting um, bridges or transition statements. The very end of 1 Corinthians 12. Paul has been talking about all the problems in the church. And then he says, but now I'm going to show you a better way. And he launches 1 Corinthians 13 into love. Okay? Love has to be the primary motivating factor for the members of the church. First, a love for God, and then a love for others. Okay? Uh, the first way that we see that God provides for the for the church is through the power of the Holy Spirit given to us. A healthy church is not a church that produces or relies on programs. Rather, it relies on the power of the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, convict, and supply. Okay, the, the American church especially, we have begun, we have become uh, purveyors of products. All right, we produce a lot of programs and we say, if you want to grow to X amount of people or you want to get more money or you want to do whatever, then do this. We did it. It worked for us. It'll work for you. Okay. Uh, with all due respect, and this is probably going to seem anything but respectful, um, too many churches today are sanctified, glorified late night infomercials about themselves. You can be like us. You know, and we all know that one line in the infomercial, right? Like they're telling you, um, you paid $20 for this product and da, da, da. And what's the next line? But wait, there's more, right? Sometimes I think uh, a lot of churches get that way too. And sometimes we do it with our church calendars. Oh man, now the preacher's going to start meddling. Uh, one thing that, I, I, that really frustrates me is this. When a church fills its calendar so full that we do not build any margin into our lives to do ministry. And by the way, our number one ministry is our family. When I have to go, oh man, I got to go to church this day, this day, this day, this day, this day. I don't have margin in my life, which then reveals I am trusting in the power of me Myself and I, not in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? I don't want us to miss this. In Jesus, we have everything we need to be the church we're called to be. One of the most prideful statements we could ever make in, in a church is this one. Well, if we just had more people, if we just had more money, if we just had the resources of that church down the road, then we could do all the things that that church is doing. I'm sorry, did I miss the verse in the Bible that says I'm supposed to be like the church down the road and not like uh, the Christ who called and saved me? Did I miss that verse somewhere? I don't think so. That's the thing. We keep wishing for more 
while neglecting what we have. In Jesus, we have everything we need to be the Christians, the families, and the church that God has called us to be. He and he alone is sufficient. Here's the second way that God provides for the body, through its members. Notice in the text it says their eyes, their hands, their feet, their noses. Evidently in Chris's Bible, their fingernails. Um, sorry, Chris. It's an illustration that points us to individual members. You don't lose your individuality because you're part of the body. Instead, God uses that individuality that he has given you to strengthen the body. If you're saved this morning, I want you to understand you have at least one spiritual gift. Now, nobody has them all because God created this way so that we would all need and work in, or in interdependence. There we go. With one another. So because no one has all the gifts, there's never a time or a place or a church that we can say, I don't need that person. We all need those that God fitly frames together and places in the body. Because it's when we use our gifts to the glory of God that the body is strengthened and the gospel goes out. Now, God has created the body. He provides for the body for a specific reason. What is the church's purpose? It is we are to glorify God. Our ultimate purpose is the glory of the Lord. Going back to 2 Corinthians 4, 7, it says, For we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. Paul is pulling heavily from Jeremiah 18 about the potter and the clay. Not only does the clay not to get, does not get to tell the potter what to make of it, but the clay doesn't get to decide what it's made up into. We don't get to go to God and go, all right, Lord, we want all these gifted teachers and musicians and this, and we want to become this, and we want to go do that. We don't get to do this. This is not our body. It is God's body. He supplies and dictates who we are and what we do. When we look at people, what do we need to see? We need to see a beautiful masterpiece. Now, why would I say that? Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship or masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 tell us how we're saved, by grace through faith. Verse 10 tells us why we have been saved, to do good works. So can I just ask you a quick question? How many of you feel like a masterpiece right now? How many of you feel like, man, I'm exactly where and what God wanted me to be. Uh, I, I should have asked my children this a, a little bit ago, uh, but I forgot. Uh, I, I wanted to pull out our Mr. Potato Head. Um, because if I'm being honest, sometimes that's kind of how we feel, right? Like the, the, the nose is where the eye is supposed to be and the the foot's coming out the mouth, or in my case, in the mouth. Um, we don't feel very much like a masterpiece. Why? Because we're looking at things from our perspective and not God's. You see, when I think that I'm the potter instead of understanding I'm the clay, then I start believing pridefully that I get to decide what I do how I do it and where I do it. But when I understand that God is the potter and I'm the clay, then my responsibility is to be moldable in the hands of the maker. For him to use me as he desires. And let's be honest, we all have cracks. All right, we all have faults. So what's the purpose of God using cracked people 
that that earthen those earthen vessels. Well, those cracks remind us that we need God's grace every single day. And as God supplies that grace to fill in those cracks, sometimes a little superficial, sometimes really deep, it reminds us of what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12, that God's grace is sufficient. See, when I see my cracks, I understand my faults and my shortcomings. And I see how God's grace miraculously fills them in. It allows the glory of God to shine in me and through me to those God has sent me to. That's why Paul says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to boast in my weaknesses. For when I am weak, then God's strength is revealed. We don't need to be strong in ourselves. We need to be humble and weak in ourselves so that the strength of God can shine in us and through us. That's how we become that masterpiece. Because from the moment God saved you, he began to mold you and to shape you into the man or the woman, into the family and applying it outside. The church that he has called us to be. Yeah, we have cracks. Yeah, we're a little disfigured at times, but the potter supplies the grace to smooth it out, to create this beautiful work of art that glorifies him. Now, what's the number one way? I'm gonna try to give a moment for somebody to reply to this in the uh, comments if you want to. What is the number one way that the church glorifies God? Give just a just just a minute here. I'm try to finish off my coffee from my sock monkey. All right, there's probably a lag, and so somebody puts in service. That is ap- that's part of it, certainly. Number one way we glorify God, and there's probably going to be a lag here, so you're going to type it, and I'm going to be too fast. Making disciples. Number one way that we glorify God. Now, uh, by the way, I I see that Tammy just um, put that in there, uh, loving others. Listen, one of the greatest ways that we love others is to make disciples. Okay? We need to make disciples. The one thing that God has specifically commanded the church to do is what? Go, therefore, make disciples disciples. And and Tracy, you're right. That is how we live it out. All right, go back to the past couple of weeks. Love God, love others, and love them as Christ loves the church. Well, if I'm living that out, I'm going to be making disciples both in the church and outside of the church through evangelism. Okay? As we realize that the potter has saved us to go and reflect him to the world, we will want to do what he's created us to do, which is to make disciples. Now, listen, there's a lot of good things that we can do, but the number one way that we glorify God, the number one command, uh, commission he has given us is to go make disciples. All right, let, let's say that, that a church goes out and uh, we, we end hunger in our community. Is that a good thing? Absolutely. Um, If we make sure that every person has warm clothes as winter's coming on, is that a good thing? Absolutely. But if we don't share the gospel, then all we've done is made them comfortable while they're waiting a fiery eternity. We do these good things so that we can share the gospel in the hopes that God in his grace will save more like he has saved us. This is the motivation to make disciples. The number one place that we make disciples is in our home. Why did we make a transition this year? to to family ministry because we realized the number one uh, institution created by God 
was family. It started with the marriage of Adam and Eve, and then it went out from there. What gives the body unity in our relationship with God is that we fulfill our purpose. Now, here's the thing. We're, we're going to do it differently. All right, let's go ahead and apply this very quickly. All right, so what is the responsibility of every part of the body? Before we can do right things, we have to have the right attitude and motivation. All right, so that goes back to love. We have to love. Love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love others. Now, remember that the uh, new motivation, John 13, Love others as Christ has loved us, right? So, every part of the body must do its part. Again, if we were, if we were to just look at our text, there are eyes, there are ears, there are feet, there's hands, there's nose. Now, those parts of the body correspond to the list of uh, spiritual gifts given in verses 27 to 31, also in Ephesians 4, uh, Romans uh, 12 as well, okay? Um, in other words, everybody has a part to play. If you have breath in your body and you have been saved by the grace of God, you have a role to play in the body. No one is more important or more needed than anybody else. Your part isn't going to be my part. My part's not going to be your part. This is why we understand that there is unity in diversity. All right, can I just be really honest? I praise God that Westlake is not made up of a bunch of Justins. Can you imagine all the squirrels that we would be chasing, right? Because when I don't take the medicine, it's like, oh, man, that's a really pretty. Hey, check it out over there. Ding, 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 right? There's unity and diversity, which means I don't have to see things the same way you see them, and you don't have to see them the same way that I see them, as long as we are pulling and desiring the same outcome. We can do things differently as long as it doesn't violate scripture and it helps us make disciples, touchdown. Problems in church start to happen when the eyes try to smell or the foot tries to hear. Now, are they part of the body? Absolutely they are. But is a foot the best body part to hear something? Probably not. Is the eye the best thing to smell something? Absolutely not. Each body was created, formed, and put in the right place in our body to accomplish God's objective for our physical body, but more importantly, our spiritual body known as the church. Now, one thing that I think churches have to change, we have to change and make it and we have to stop making it be okay for somebody to kim simply come worship but not serve. For too long, the church has been consumers, not givers, not disciple makers, not participants. I'm not going to make the argument this morning, but... We can make a biblical argument that if we are not attending, giving, and serving, we are not biblical members. The church is not, what can I get out of it? Rather, how can I glorify God by serving in it? You have been saved for a purpose. You have a gift. And the church needs you to use that gift. Every person has been saved that, that is surrendered to the gospel. They have been given that gift and they should be used to, they should be expected, sorry, to use that for the glory of God and the building up of God's church. Which leads me to the final application this morning. We must treat everyone as equally valuable. God's per put every person in the body as he desires 
for his glory. He did so, according to verse 25, so that there would be no division in the body. The oneness of the body, despite being made up of many members, is meant to reflect the unity of the Trinity. See, there's one of those theological arguments that Paul makes in this. Okay, now there's a lot of ways we can do it, but let's just look at salvation for a moment. All right, so the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, three separate, distinct um, people who are one God. Okay, now, how or what is their purpose? Well, their purpose, 2 Peter 3, 9, says, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So God desires for sinners to be saved. Now, how do we see unity in the Trinity in the doctrine of salvation? Well, it was God the Father's plan. Ephesians 1, 4 says, before the foundation of of the world. God has chosen us in him. The father even decided how he was going to save sinners. Isaiah 53 verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering for sin. So the father's plan was to send the son to be a substitute for sinners. Now, as we saw earlier in Ephesians 1, we have redemption in his, that's Jesus's, blood. The fact that we are saved is confirmed by the Spirit, according to 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Also, Romans 8, 16 says, For the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now, again, there's one God with one purpose, but each member of the Trinity has a unique but equally important role to play in accomplishing that purpose. This is what the unity of the church is supposed to look like. We are many members who have one God, one Lord, one mission. And so individually, we use our gifts given by God to accomplish that one mission for the glory of the one God. This is unity. In the, same, in the same breath, we need to understand salvation couldn't have occurred unless each member of the Trinity did their part. It begins with every member loving and respecting one another. Again, I know we're going to disagree on things. We're not going to see things the exact same way. That's okay. When we find ourselves in a place of disagreement... We remember who unites us. That God has gifted each of us equally for his glory. Somewhere along the line, we created a hierarchy of ministry that, you know, pastors or, or leaders were, were the most important and they did the work of ministry. And then there were teachers and, and worship teams and on down the, down the line. Um, do me a favor. I want you to find that hierarchy in Scripture. I'm not saying that there's not a list of different gifts. I'm saying show me in Scripture where one's more important than the other. Um, you're not going to be able to. Because God, according to his purpose, for his glory, has gifted, called, and assembled us to do our role in each person is equally valuable. The church, according to verse 26, should have the, that three musketeers attitude. All for one and one for all. Anything less than this does not glorify God and in fact, I would say, invites God's judgment on the body. Because division is of the devil. We are one as God is one. We are Many with one mission, one purpose, to glorify God by making disciples. So I'm going to close our time together with asking a few things. First off, are you even part of the body of Christ? Have you surrendered to the gospel? 
Do you know that you're saved? I'm not saying, do you know about God? I'm not asking, have you gone to church? Have you heard? I'm asking, do you understand your sin was part of the reason that God sent his son to be born of that virgin, living a sinless life as an example and obedience to the Father, to lay his life down on a cross outside of Jerusalem, and on the third day rise again. Have you surrendered your life to Jesus? If you're watching this and you have not, I'm gonna encourage you. I'm gonna try to put it in the comments really quickly here, okay? Email me at that email address, Pastor Justin at westlakebaptist.org. I would love to be able to tell you how you can surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ today, how you can become a part of this body, having experienced his grace, and how you can bring honor and glory to God in ways up until that point you weren't able to. Have you wholly committed your life to Christ? See, a lot of times we, we look at church as a buffet. We choose what church we go to like a buffet. What I mean is this. Well, yeah, I, I, I want a, a, a charismatic pastor who makes me feel good. I want some really good music. Um, I, I want to have this ministry or that ministry, but don't ask me to serve. Don't ask me to do this, this, and this. And, and so we kind of pick and choose, right? And, and so we, we look and decide if I'm going to go to that church based on what it has to offer me, not what can I give to it. What if God sent you, whether it's to Westlake or, or wherever you are uh, attending church regularly, all right, what if God sent you to that church, not so that that church could give you everything you wanted, but rather so that you could serve in an area that they are weak in? What if you are the, the missing piece that you have been gifted in a way that would glorify God and strengthen that church? But that requires a wholehearted commitment, a whole life commitment. You're right, Jeff. Church is not Burger King. Are you a productive part of the body? Listen, maybe you're going, I'm not a Bible teacher. Neither am I. I'm a shy person who gets who is very socially awkward, who when I get in stressful situations will probably say something that is going to embarrass my entire family and um, make me want to crawl up under a rock. But the day that we surrender to Jesus was the day that God took control and said, I'm going to use you where I created you to be. It's not about my strength. It's about our weaknesses. Because through our weaknesses, God's strength is revealed. Do you know what your spiritual gift is? Listen, if you don't, do me a favor. Email me at that same address, all right? Pastor Justin at westlakebaptist.org. I would love to be able to sit down and talk with you about how can you know what your spiritual gift is and how can you start using it? One of my favorite lines is, we were not saved to sit sour and soak. We were saved to serve. How can you start serving now? Listen, we can't do anything about the past, but we can do something about now and moving forward. Have you surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you using your life to bring glory to the Lord Jesus Christ? Are we as a church pulling in the same direction 
to glorify God by making disciples? Or do we need to allow God to do some surgery in us? Thank you for spending the last hour or so with me. Um, I'm hoping we're going to get back together in the building, and we're going to continue to do the, the live stream. We will do a live stream uh, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock right here. Um, so looking forward to that. If I can pray for you, encourage you in any way, please, please, please reach out to me. Uh, again, thank you for the many prayers. Let me close by praying for you. Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for the opportunity just to spend time uh, with your body. And God, I pray that you would strengthen each of us. I pray for each person watching uh, right now and, and those that might watch on a replay later. Lord God, I, I pray above all else that they have surrendered to you, that they are a blood-bought, born-again child of God. And for that, we praise you. For those that are still far from you, Lord, would you draw them in your grace that they might be saved. And Lord, I, I just ask that we as the body would continue to pull in the same direction, and that is to glorify you by making disciples. Lord, help us not to sit back and wish we had this or that, but to praise you for everything and every one that you have given us. You have given us what and who we need. And we look forward to how you're gonna to continue to place pieces in the right place that your name above every other name would be magnified and glorified, that we would be strengthened and that the gospel would go in the Scruggs community, Westlake, the Commonwealth, the country, and indeed the nations. Thank you for our time together. We praise you. And we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again, everybody, for joining in. I hope it's been an encouragement and a challenge. If I can pray for you, let me know. Um, and we'll keep sending out updates on any schedule changes. Um, last one, uh, just want to remind everybody, especially those coming in uh, kind of towards the tail end, Sunday, December 20th is Ugly Christmas Sweater Day at uh, Westlake. So wear those ugly Christmas sweaters for worship. And if you're going to be joining us on the live stream that day, hey, take a picture of it and post it in the comments that morning. We want to see you. We love you guys. We're praying for you. And we will see you Wednesday night right here, 7 o'clock. Goodbye.